this. Okay, hi y'all, it's Hate Street Voice on Sunday, April 3rd, 2022, and I am here so excited to be here with Danielle and Shana, who, Shana, you're Paul Ennis to my left here, your niece, correct? Great niece. Great niece. Yes. And Danielle, his, you're his niece, is that how it works? You're his, tell correct. me. Hi, welcome. <laughs> he was my mother's brother. He was your mother's brother. Yes. Wow. And then she was my daughter. So she, um, he was her grunkle. <laughs> I got it from so, Gravity Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Not too far from the tree, huh? Yeah. yeah. The wild tree. Yeah. So can you tell me, Danielle, some early memories of Paul or, 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 you know, what are your reflections on him? And by the way, may he rest in peace because he passed away. I don't yeah. know the last month. Um, yeah. So God, and then this is why we're honoring him on the cover this month, which I'm really the spring edition. Um, and I wanted to colorize it to keep the, you know, to keep the energy Correct. and the beauty. Yes, so I'll shut up now. And I would love to hear some of your thoughts. <laughs> um, so I do remember some earlier, uh, some earlier memories that I have is um, we, I was probably maybe hmm, four or five. This is a very, um, I really only see this in sort of still pictures, but there was, uh, he made a visit to, um, it's called Daisy Town. Mm -hmm. And it's in, um, it's near Little California, Pennsylvania, where my mom and my dad went to college. Mm -hmm. And he visited us there. Uh, there are photos. And uh, as always in the photo, I'm holding a cat because I'm always holding a cat. And um that one's that one's very scattered but i do remember when we moved out we lived on a farm and he would come visit us and my uh my my biggest memory is that he would always bring me the coolest things i remember one time he came and he brought me a whole bunch maybe six seven homemade scarves wow all different patterns and tassels. And um, I just remember thinking that that was so cool. They had come from New York. Right. And um, so what year would that have been approximately? Oh, man, that might have been in uh, late 70s. OK, OK. So he'd already sort of done like this. This obviously had happened. I need to, what, uh, do you know the exact year that this happened? I think it was 68, is that right? I need to. I think that was 67. Yeah. So, so, and he was, and he was, the whole family was from New York, correct? Uh, the family was actually from Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth because, I, you know, I should bring this up. There was a lot of uh, controversy as to who this was because a lot of people said it was hibiscus. I'm sure you've heard that whole story. Right which was really, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's like, there was a lot of really like um, anger about it and which, you know, duly, duly, no, I mean. A know. lot of, say yeah, again. Very passionate feelings. Say again. Very passionate feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Um, well, what I do know about that is, um, well, I think one of the most important things is that my mother bought him that sweater. And I can back that up because she's told me that story as well. The sweater and yeah that sweater with the turtleneck my mom bought him that my mom and my grandmother bought him that sweater um if you look at that picture i i there is no denying that that is paul Ennis's face mm -hmm. um and now i'm i don't want to speak for other people um but i know that there are people that he has told this story to he was literally he has told people the exact emotions and the exact thoughts that were going through his head at the moment that he did that um and i also i don't know if i should be saying hearsay but he had been working um he went to college for social work at penn state and he had been working at the welfare office and he called into work that day um and he went to this protest and this photo was taken and he uh went to work the next day and um was fired for calling in because they saw the photo wow 
Um, and then uh, the last piece of information that I have is that my brother was in San Francisco uh, through the last week of my uncle's life. Mm. And once my uncle passed, my brother had the uh, duty of not only dealing with the funeral home, but dealing with all of his possessions. So he brought back things that were um, stuff that the family would want. Um, and among that, um, I don't have it here. Unfortunately, I would love to show it to you, but there is a large framed photo of the picture behind you. And it is signed by the photographer and it says, thanks for putting my kids through college. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Now, now you tell me from the from your mouth who the photographer is because I can't trust Wikipedia. I would love to hear it from the family's voice if that's possible. Well, of course, you know, I don't remember that. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll figure that one out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that one out. Okay. But yeah, I, like I said, if I had it here, that would be beautiful yeah. for me to show you. But it does, it is signed and it says, thanks for putting my kids through college. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And it is still in the family. It's not yeah. like- out of the thrift store or something we still have it yeah uh, so danielle how would you say that that your relationship with paul like did how did it affect your life that what was Man, it, he he was he was somebody to me that was very mysterious and intriguing um i saw him on a handful of occasions. He wasn't somebody that I saw on a regular basis. Obviously we lived in Pennsylvania and at some points in Georgia and he was in New York and San Francisco and then he traveled abroad a good bit. Um, but I was in contact with him over the phone a good bit and he was so kind to myself and especially my, he was so good to my mom. He was so good. He loved my mom more than words can say. He was so, um, he was intriguing. He was fun. Uh, like I said, he, when I did see him, he would bring me amazing uh, gifts. He um, brought me some leopard striped leggings one time and I thought it was the coolest thing ever and I wore them everywhere. But he brought me out to New York one year. Oh. How, and okay, how old were you? What was, the, what was the age difference between the two of you? Well, he was born in 43 and I was born in 68. Okay. So, um, so he brought you to New York. Brought okay. me to New York. Um, flew me out there all by myself. I was like 15. And uh, so I stayed with him, obviously, at his apartment. I was there for maybe three days. And uh, he just, you know, the cool thing about him was that when he, uh, took me places. We didn't go to the tourist traps. We didn't go sightseeing. I got a glimpse into his life. You know, we didn't go to the Statue of Liberty and mm -hmm. all that. We did stuff that, you know, that, that he did. And, and that was glorious. You know, he, um, he took me shopping, of course, because you're in New York. Um, it's the first time I ever ate steak tartare. Ooh. which I'm still surprised that I even did that. Um, what, what district did he live in? Uh, well, I don't know. He There's the Lower East Side. Was it downtown? Because I used to live there. Um, downtown, uh, Lower East Side, West Side. You don't know. It's okay. You're in Manhattan. Um, in an apartment, um, but he took me to Soho. Um, and uh, um, he took me to Cats on Broadway you know, just kind of did the New York experience. Um, um, I with him, I met friends of his, he introduced me to people. It was um, magical. It okay. was truly magical. Um, and then about a year later, he took me out to San Francisco. Mm. And um, the highlight of that was that I was there over New Year's and he took me to and now, of course, I don't remember exactly which year this was. And I'm sorry I don't have all these facts. If you were 15, 16, and we do the math, and you were born in 68, you said, that we'll, well, yeah, everybody do the math. I'm terrible at math. So you figured right. it out. But anyway, you were there. You're in San Francisco. <laughs> and he took me to a dead concert. And uh, I remember David Crosby opened. And that was 
amazing because, you know, I really, I've always really loved music and, um, I got to hang out backstage where uh, members of the hog farm were hanging out and stuff like that. And I just felt very, very special. You know, he made me feel very special. And I always felt like I fit in. And I got to meet Calico, who isn't was an amazing woman. And uh, the one thing that I did want to mention about New York was he sent me home with um, a lot of old albums of his, which... Um, I mean, that was just, that was so cool because uh, he really turned me on to some music that, you know, I'd always been into classic music, classical rock and roll, um, but he turned me on to, to the Stones, you know, um, I had always, you know, listened to Pink Floyd, like um, Dark Side and stuff like, but he sent me home with Animals. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> and kind of opened my eyes up to the deeper, you know, cuts of um, Pink Floyd, which to this day is, I believe, the best band ever. So, Sorry, Bob Weir. We love you, too. But you know. We love you, too. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm a big Dave Gilmore fan. No, I hear you, babe. I'm with you. Right on. Me, right too. Now. And yeah. as on he would send me um you know albums this was the time of the album and he would send me albums I remember one time he sent me the cult and I was like whoa this is really different you know yeah. so he really had a huge influence on my musical taste yeah. um and he told me some stories he now I never knew Paul to um to be untruthful about things he told me that he had been a road manager for for um, Pink Floyd for a while, and um, wow. you know he would tell me think he told me that I mean, you know I don't know if it can be, uh, you know, but he confirmed uh, confirmed confirmed yeah he told me you know I remember him telling me what a great guy David Byrne was and that he was such a nice guy and so he just he knew people he knew cool people you know and I just thought that he was he was just he was what a great guy to have in your family right yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was just very, very good to us. And and my daughter, Shana, he's never even met her. And he was so good to her. Wow. Interest, yeah. So interested in our lives. So you never got to meet him in person. Hi, Shana. So this is Shana. Hello. Thanks for, uh, yeah. and Danielle, thank you for all of that. And thanks for being oh, here, both of you. It's sure. awesome. Yeah. So Shana, tell me, what is, what's it like to have, have Paul Ennis as your, as your great uncle? I mean, how has it affected your life? And, oh, I did want to say this edition is the cycle thing about it's, you know, I, I'm turning, I, the 60s were 60 years ago, the psychedelics being legal, you know, decriminalized. And here we are, you know, in 2022. And it's about, you know, the new generation coming into this. And here you are, this amazing man behind me, uh, grand great niece a grand niece great niece whatever it is your yeah whatever <laughs> um it was really interesting I mean as my mom said he was really great to me for having literally I've never met him in person but he was really really great I mean I grew up hearing like legends of him it was less of he was more like I don't want to say like a, sto a story out of a myth, but like, because I'd never met him, it kind of seemed like that of just like hearing all these great stories, not only from my mom, but from my grandmother, uh, just about how good of a person he was and just all this cool stuff. And then um, once I turned like 13, um, he started getting in touch with me through my mom and my uncle. And he started sending me a lot of books and stuff. And a lot of those books, um, really, I mean, honestly, that's mo part of his like influence on me is those books that he sent me because like uh, he really helped get me into fantasy. He sent me the, I cannot remember the name of them. They're the Garth Nix books, um, but he sent me those and so that got me really into fantasy again after I'd kind of got out, like lulled out of it. 
And then he also sent me a visual novel or a graphic novel, I guess, of, about um, the protests for racial equality and stuff like that. And I really, really liked that. And it really opened my eyes. And I mean, a lot of that is really from there, from the books that he sent me kind of like shaped how I am as a person. And I mean, the music that he showed my mom is the music I listen to. I've got a Pink Floyd poster right there. I've got posters all around me. I mean, it's really, uh, he's really, really been influential to me, especially with uh, the music and like the things that he'd send me and stuff like that. But um, he was always just a really great person to like talk to whenever I did have the chance to talk to him. But like, I don't know, like that. And I mean, I'm, if you can't tell by the Woodstock shirt and all that, I'm very, it's just a very big part of my personality now. And he definitely had a very big part to play in that for my life, so. Do you think he gave you a sense of um, incredible radical, you know, radical independence and freedom, freedom to express yourself and that kind of thing, I would imagine? <laughs> I'd say he was a part of it, yeah. I mean, my mom definitely too, but I've, she got that partly from him, then I, and I got that from him and from her, then yeah, definitely. I mean, being taken backstage at the age of 15 or 16 at a dead show, you know, I mean, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember, both of you, do you remember the first time you saw this image behind me? Do you remember? I grew up seeing it. My grandma has it. Never, all. My, wasn't ever not there. Yeah. yeah, she had it in her house all the time. I mean, she had sticker a sticker of it on her car. I've got a sticker <laughs> of it on my, uh, my Ford because I've got a car I'm trying to sell right now, but... um. Hey y'all, you want to buy a Ford? My cars. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, if you want it, but, um, kitty cat. Yeah. yeah, yeah so it, what, so, so oh. what is it, what does this image mean to you, Shana? Um, not only does it mean some sort of like legacy to me, but it's also just, it's very, I mean, I'm an extremely pacifistic person. I'm extremely peaceful. And that's very, like a very big, important image of that in my brain is just like they're they're instead of like fighting with violence they're using love they're using flowers they're using nature and the our world to try to like get the cause that they want without being violent about it you know mm -hmm. and i think i was speaking to you both early before i hit record is that um peter coyote hi peter yeah was saying you know we can't beat the guns with the flowers but we can find balance but there's going to be the flowers there's going to be the guns and we have to find the balance between the two yeah and that's beautiful yeah and it just shows me that also like regular people can do beautiful things yeah that's awesome yeah that's awesome and danielle what would you what were your first impressions or what does this image mean to you what's it invoke in you um <clears throat> You know, he was uh, a very independent person and he was going to do what he wanted to do, you know, no matter what, you couldn't stop him. Um, and he had very strong and passionate um, opinions about things. And that's what's going on there. You know, he, he had no fear. Um, so... The fact that he's standing there doing that in, encompasses all that independence, no fear, you know, just just doing what you want to do and and getting out there and making making your voice be heard. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think Paul would say about what's happening in Ukraine? Not to go too far down this road, but I mean, that's also the inspiration besides him passing, of course. But, you know here we are and you know the madness that's going on over there what what do you think uh, paul's um you know uh, response would be to, to or, or words of wisdom and i don't know what his response would be but whatever it is he would be extremely passionate about it mm -hmm. and um he would have no problem telling you what his opinion was <laughs> when was his birthday uh his october 22nd so uh let's see just into scorpio then right yeah cuspy oh, cusp yeah libra that's a very interesting cusp right there too yeah one's really balanced and the other one's like you know intense yeah. <laughs> okay now going back to the have you hey shana have you ever been to the Haight ashbury 
Uh, no, I haven't left this side of the country. So well, you got to come out here. You can crash on my couch. I live a block away. <laughs> Seriously. I would love to come out at some point. You got to check out the hate ash yeah. story. Um, Danielle, what would you like to say to the, or even both of you? I mean, even though you haven't been here, Shana, you know, this was you know, your dad's, your dad's stomping grounds in some way, shape or form of the inspiration of the counterculture and all of that. Like, yeah. What if, because I always say this, because it's hate street voice, hyper local with a global perspective, you can see it up there. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that we all have to take care of our communities, no matter if, you know, wherever we are in the world. Yeah. And, and the, but the hate Ashbury had this really magical, obvious, you know, it was sort of this, this uh, model of how, how we possibly could all live together and be kind and don't just step over a homeless person. You ask them if they're okay and connecting. Right. With you. Yeah. So what would you guys like to say to the hate Ashbury community, let alone communities all over the planet? Go ahead, Shana. <laughs> I was thinking, just give me two seconds. No pressure. I should have probably forewarned you, but you can just off the cuff. It's basically just um, having a voice. It's the voice of the people, right? So Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been an extreme inspiration and in not only the lives of the people living there, but the people who are in the same communities. I mean, I don't want to say I call myself a hippie, but I do call myself a hippie. And I, uh, I'm i not too big in the community down here in Tampa, but I mean, like, I definitely try to live by just like the being kind to people and the like helping the pe helping people when they need help and never, never like trying to hurt somebody, you know? And I mean, that whole philosophy is definitely exemplified there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Dan Danielle? Yeah, so I feel like the hate is, uh, it's, it's magical. It is a magical area. Uh, there's something there that- Something I, in the water, maybe. I'm not my thought else, <laughs> and I don't think I ever will. Say again, I'm sorry, I interrupted. There's something that I got there that I've never gotten anywhere else, mm. and I don't think I ever will. And there's, I, I get a sense of brotherhood among yeah. people. Um, and, you know, I don't know if it's what things were like in the 60s and there's still, you know, that goat hanging around, you know? And, and I, I think that that place was um, changed by the counterculture that happened. And um, it's, it's, um, it's magical. It's yeah. absolutely magical. And I just wanted to also say quickly about Paul that- Yeah, um, please, please. Yeah. He, um, he was, even though he was um, eccentric and excited, he was, he was a family man. He loved, he was very devoted, very loyal to his family, his yeah. sister, us, um, and the friends of his that he considered family. He, um, he was very, very good to the people in his life. Well, there's a gentleman here who lives, who's still here. Uh, he lives on, he's lived here on, on Ashbury before the Grateful Dead lived on Ashbury. Uh, his name is Harry Svee Strouch. And he was dear friends with Paul, actually. And uh, he's one of the first people that got really upset when I, a couple of editions ago, I had, had this picture and I was told that it was hibiscus and, and I corrected it, obviously. But Harry knew Paul very well. I mean, yeah, Harry, his nickname is yeah. T-S-V-I. Um, and, you know, I mean, he said the same sort of thing, what a lovely person Paul was and, and what a good friend he was. I mean, he yeah. was palling yeah. around with him in 1960, you know, 66, he had a, a, Harry had a store with his wife called In Gear and, you know, Paul would hang out. And I mean, they really was a tribe that they, that they all had. And um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love it. So that's it y'all. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And, um, the magazine comes out hopefully the week, well, the week of the 11th, just in time for Bicycle Day, which is all about Albert Hoffman and the invention of acid, LSD. And then, um, of course, the 420, which is all about, you know, weed day and yeah. then uh, Earth Day. So it'll be out that week of the uh, it'll be out that week of the 19th for sure. And uh, I got to mail you all some copies. Oh, awesome. And, and uh, yeah, I'm really grateful for this. Oh, hi, and again, uh, Shana, tell them how we all connected because I kind of, I've been so busy with the deadline. How did this all start? 
So um, when Paul was, when my uncle Rob was out there with uh, Paul taking care of him um, for the last moments, mm. my mom had a group, we had a group chat. My mom had gone in there and asked for everyone to send pictures of Paul to her. And she then sent me all those photos and asked me to put together a little like slideshow of photos with um shine on you crazy diamond playing in the background because uh pink floyd of course you and made that video it's badass thank you i yeah. put it together it was really it was pretty easy but also very stressful um but i put it i posted it and i sent it in the group chat at like i don't know what time it was here anymore but i think it was like seven o'clock over there and um i sent it and Rob, um, my uncle, had been watching it. And as he was watching it, he was Paul, in the room. Yeah, he was in the room with Paul, and Paul passed away oh. watching his life literally flash before his eyes. And um, I posted it, and I don't know how you got a hold of it, whether you uh, were looking his name up or somebody sent it I to think you. I, don't know. I think actually Harry had posted it on his LinkedIn to YouTube. I think I, it took me to the YouTube channel. You know. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then yeah. you had commented, and I uh, messaged you on Facebook, and then we just kind of came here. So, yeah, it's just from that video, basically. But I'm just so amazed that, like, he was watching that when he passed away, like. Listening to the song. That's amazing. Yay. Pink Floyd helped him fly away. That's awesome. Yeah. He, oh, wow. Yep. Now he's shining on like a crazy yeah. dog. Like <laughs> a continue, crazy diamond he is. Continuing to shine on, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Danielle and Shana, so much. And um, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be in touch. This is great. And yeah. Lots, thank lots, you so much. Lots of love we, from the hate. Hey. Say again, Mom. We appreciate you doing this. Oh, 100%. 100%. All right. Much love. Yep. Have Thank a beautiful you. day. Yes. Bye. Be in touch. Bye bye. Peace. Peace. Peace.